Are you a ChatGPT user? Did you know that you can now connect ChatGPT directly to your files in OneDrive for Business? Is this a co-pilot for Microsoft 365 killer? Has OpenAI just eclipsed Microsoft? Or maybe there's a huge risk here you need to know about to protect your business data. Let's dive in and learn the truth. But before we do, a quick introduction. My name is Nick DeCoursey. I'm the owner of Bright Ideas Agency, a digital transformation consulting company focused on the needs of smaller businesses. I'm also the author of Who's in the Copilot Seat, a guidebook for small and medium-sized business leaders on how to adopt AI technology. If you're interested in learning more about working with me or getting a copy of my book, there are links below where you can get more information. So if you have a ChatGPT account and you're using the GPT-4 or GPT-4.0 model, you have the option of uploading a file. This has been here for a while for paid accounts, but I think it's new for the free tier. But what's really new is that we can now access files directly from a variety of locations, including personal OneDrive accounts, Google Drive, and OneDrive for Business, which includes access to SharePoint. Now, all this is doing is creating a linkage to make it easy to upload a file or files from these cloud locations to ChatGPT. It's essentially no different than the ability we have had to upload files from our local PC. Just now, you don't need to sync that cloud file to your local file system in order to do it. When you opt to connect this to OneDrive, the service asks for what is a rather alarming set of permissions. However, those permissions, even if you grant them, will be scoped only to the user you're logged into. But if you're an admin, you will be able to grant permissions on an organizational basis for any users who choose to use the service. As always, all the demos you're seeing are conducted in a demo environment and you are never seeing anyone's private data. For those of you looking at this who aren't alarmed, another feeling may be one of excitement, as it now appears you've given ChatGPT access to read all your files. And isn't that exactly the same as what Copilot for Microsoft 365 does? Well, before we get on to that, let's deal with the scenario where you saw that list of permissions and you were concerned. By default, your Microsoft 365 tenant or your Intra ID organization allows individual users to allow web apps to access Microsoft 365 graph data in order to make them work. Think of services like Calendly, where a user might want to set up an account and need to be able to let it see their calendar for it to work. What's happening here is no different, but connected with files and not calendars, and it's not providing access to anything that user wouldn't ordinarily have access to. However, it is possible to restrict the ability of users to set up these linkages if it's something that concerns you. I'm not gonna go over that scenario here, but take a look at the options under the Azure Portal Enterprise Applications section if you want to see the settings you have access to to stop users connecting services such as these to your Microsoft 365 data. So once you've agreed to that long list of permissions, you can directly access the Microsoft 365 files you have access to from within ChatGPT. For example, I can load this spreadsheet and ask ChatGPT to analyze its contents without having to have that file on my PC. That's pretty neat and certainly saves some time. But for those of you who look at this and think it's a replacement for Copilot for Microsoft 365, is it? Well, there are two answers, a long one and a short one. The short one is no, but the long one is that depending on how you're using Copilot for Microsoft 365 and which type of ChatGPT account you have, this may adequately replicate all the value you would get from Copilot. Let's start off by considering why the short answer is no. Before I expand my answers here, if you're finding this video useful, it would be great if you'd give it a like to help it get in front of more people. And if you're interested in seeing more like this, please subscribe to the channel. When you give ChatGPT access to pull in files from OneDrive or SharePoint, all you're doing is creating a new simpler route through which cloud files can be added into your ChatGPT prompt as context. This is the equivalent of a similar prompting copilot with GraphGround Chat, where you enter a slash and then select a specific file as context for your prompt. Here you see me referring to exactly the same file I just highlighted in ChatGPT. But Copilot for Microsoft 365 doesn't ground itself solely on the contextual data you manually choose to add to your prompts. 
It is built on top of a context orchestration layer powered by the Copilot Semantic Index, which is a vector index of all your Microsoft 365 data that connects together content based upon the semantic meaning of the terms in your files. Here, you see a diagram from Microsoft outlining how this technology can connect the content of two documents based upon a loose understanding of similar terms between them. So with Copilot, I don't need to manually choose what contextual information I want it to look at. I can do this, but in most cases, the power of this solution is demonstrated by prompts like this one, where I'm just generally asking Copilot about a project that's referenced in a variety of places and letting it find the contextual data it needs. With ChatGPT, there is no separate index of the data. It isn't going out and proactively looking through your files to help you out. It's just referring to the ones you mention in your prompt, exactly as was the case with file upload previously. So does this replace what Copilot for Microsoft 365 does? Again, the short answer is no. But with my longer answer, I'm probably going to get myself into some trouble, as I imagine many Copilot fans might find my take somewhat controversial. One of the biggest barriers in the efficacy of Copilot for Microsoft 365's context building superpowers is the data it's indexed in many organizations isn't actually that good. If we forget about oversharing and just enough access as connected but separate issues, the value or lack thereof of Copilot's index in many organizations comes down to poor document lifecycle management and ineffective retention policies. For many organizations, the data preparation step of implementing Copilot is the tallest barrier to overcome. And if you implement Copilot with your data estate in a mess, even if you've dealt with the issue of someone inadvertently having access to private data, like the CEO's pay rate, which everyone seems to get so concerned about, all that old data and duplication from multiple copies of the same file will have a negative impact on Copilot's efficacy. And if you can't rely on Copilot's contextual index to reliably add value because of your messy data, your only recourse is to be highly specific in what files you reference as context in your prompts. And so you end up using Copilot in a mode that is roughly similar to what ChatGPT has on offer here. And depending on what you use generative AI for, you might get greater value from ChatGPT's responses anyway. I use Copilot for Microsoft 365 a lot, and I've spoken here many times about how I get return on investment with the time I save in using it. But I still do subscribe to ChatGPT, and I do use it fairly often too. Having Copilot has not diminished the value I see in my ChatGPT subscription. That said, there are certain things I do every day that I cannot do in ChatGPT, even with this new easy file inclusion feature. One of the biggest value points for Copilot for Microsoft 365, in my opinion, is its features for helping to manage meeting content in Teams. But you might not do Teams meetings often, or you might not need Copilot plugged directly into Word or OneNote. Whether ChatGPT will work for you entirely depends on what your workloads are and what tools you use to get them done. However, there are some other considerations you should be aware of before deciding that these new ChatGPT features let you get rid of Copilot for Microsoft 365. On the other hand though, are you getting ready for Copilot for Microsoft 365? Or have you already started using it and need more help to maximize your return? My new Copilot for Microsoft 365 adoption package puts together all the consulting and training services most small and medium sized businesses need when rolling out Copilot and packages them together with one transparent and fully understandable per user price. I will work with you to ensure your technical baseline is established to get the best from Copilot, help your leaders understand AI technology, train your end users in how to use Copilot, work one-on-one -on -one with your executives to build their generative AI skills, and help you establish the communication engagement framework that will make you successful in the long term. Availability to work directly with me is limited, so if you're interested in getting this type of help to ensure your business is truly getting the best from Copilot, check out the link below where you can get started with a free, no obligation consultation to find out if this package is a good fit for you. When it comes to business data, one of the biggest considerations you should have is whether you are protecting it adequately. And protecting it can be for lots of reasons. You might have proprietary information you don't want shared with competitors. 
You might have people's personal information, which is protected under your privacy policy or compliance standards like PCI DSS. Or you might be concerned about ethical issues like contributing to AI model training. If you have a Microsoft 365 business subscription and you use Microsoft Copilot, which is included with that for free, or you subscribe to Copilot for Microsoft 365, Microsoft makes strong assertions in its agreement with you over how it will protect the data you share with it, and importantly, not use that data for purposes such as AI model training. You might consider that with new file handling capabilities, even in ChatGPT3, that this can avoid the need for you to purchase a service like Copilot for Microsoft 365. But there are two big differences here. First, the default for ChatGPT's free or plus tier is for any data you include in your prompts, including the content of files, to be available to OpenAI for future model training. Second, the free tier plan and ChatGPT Plus are both designed to be personal accounts, meaning you have no centralized control over those accounts or the business data they contain. Now, if you choose to subscribe to ChatGPT Team or Enterprise, then the situation is a little different. First, they guarantee not to use your data for model training, and you get management features to allow you to maintain control over connected accounts. But at that point, you will be paying a similar amount for those plans as you will for Copilot for Microsoft 365. There are fundamentals here that aren't just to do with ChatGPT, or even always to do with AI. Firstly, you need to consider the default settings in Microsoft 365 that allow users to give third-party applications access to your Microsoft 365 resources. It's up to you to ensure that data you need to protect cannot leave the control of your organization. And there are lots of approaches to this, but it should at least be something that's on your radar. It's important for me to flag here again that users can only access data they otherwise have access to but as we have seen in the data preparation guidance for Copilot, what users have access to and what users should have access to are often entirely different things. Secondly, every business, whether you are actively using AI or not, needs a set of policies and guidance in place to make it clear to team members what is a reasonable use for AI and how should you deal with your company's data when using these tools. But this should also extend to other types of products too. Microsoft's recent Work Trend Index report shows us that nearly four in five of those who are using AI at work are doing so using their own tools, such as ChatGPT+. This creates risks for businesses, and is just the latest front in the battle against shadow IT that has been raging since cloud-based software as a service became the predominant vehicle through which new software becomes available. So whether ChatGPT's new capabilities open up new options for you really depend on how you want to use these tools. But as long as you keep your eye on the issues of protecting your data and ensuring safety, there is an increasingly rich pool of options to maximize the value of generative AI to all types of organizations and workloads. Do you agree with my analysis here? Do these new ChatGPT features add greater benefits or just more risks for businesses? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Thanks for watching through to the end. Until the next video, bye bye.